This is part 50 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing the data filtering logic in an Angular component so we have better control on when that filtering code should and shouldn't execute. This is continuation to our previous video, part 49. So please watch part 49 before proceeding. Now, if we take a look at the project that we've been working with so far in this video series, at the moment, our filtering logic is within this pipe, employee filter pipe. And this pipe is an impure pipe because we have set the pure flag to false. And in our previous video, we discussed using impure pipes to filter data is not a good idea because they run unnecessarily on every change detection cycle, even when the source data does not change. So these impure pipes can significantly degrade the performance of your application. So therefore, the recommended approach is to move this filtering logic into our list employees component itself so we have better control on when the filtering code should and shouldn't execute. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is create another property. I'm going to name it filtered employees. We are going to use this property to store the filtered list of employees. Now if you're wondering why can't we use this employees property to store our filtered list of employees? Well, we can use it, but the problem with that is first time when we filter the employees, that works fine. But when we remove the filter and when we want our list back, that is the complete list of employees, we have to make another round trip to the web server. So in order to avoid that, we are going to use this property employees to store the full list of employees and we are going to use this property filtered employees to store the filtered list of employees. So this approach allows us to completely implement the filtering logic on the client side without having to make the unnecessary round trips to the web server which can significantly boost the performance. At the moment we are using employee filter pipe to filter employees. We don't want to do that so let's remove this pipe from here. And also notice we are binding to the employee's property. We don't want to bind to the employee's property. Instead, we want to bind to this filtered employee's property. So instead of binding to employees, let's include filtered employees. Now, if we take a look at our list employees page, we have our search by name text box right here. And this text box is bound to this property search term. And notice we have two-way data binding here as we are using ng model with banana in a box syntax. And the search term property is within our component class right here. Now I'm going to turn this property into a property with a getter and setter so we can execute some code when this property value changes. So first let's turn this into a private backing field. And then let's include a getter the property name is going to be search term without an underscore and the getter is going to return our search term which is of type string. And we want to return the value that we have in our bracket field underscore search term. So this getter is called every time we need the value of this property. Now let's include a setter as well. This setter is going to receive a parameter. I'm going to name it value. You can name it anything you want. And we know this is going to be of type string and assign it as the value for our private backing field. So the important point to keep in mind is this search term property is bound to our search text box. So every time we change the value in the search by name text box, the property setter is called. So within our component class, this setter is called. So in addition to assigning the value to the private backing field, we also want to filter the list of employees. So this dot filtered employees. So this filtered employees property is this property equals this dot. I'm going to include a method. I'm going to name it filter employees. So this method is going to have the logic to filter employees because we don't have that method yet. It's, you know, trying to correct it to this property, but we'll create this method in just a bit. And to this method, we are going to pass our search term, which is coming into the setter as this value parameter. 
So this is the reason we converted this property to include a getter and a setter. If we didn't have the setter, we wouldn't have been able to execute this code. Now let's create this filter employees method. First, let's format this code a bit so it's not too cluttered. Now, you might be wondering, why are we passing the search term as a value parameter to this filter employees method? This method has access to the search term property right here. And we can use the search term property within this method to filter the list of employees. We don't really have to pass the value as a parameter to this filter employees method. But the reason I'm doing it is I think it makes our code more readable. Anyone looking at this method, you know, can understand straight away uh, this method is using this parameter to filter the list of employees. But either way, it works fine. Now, the logic to filter the employees using the search term is already present in our filter pipe that we created in our previous video. So let's copy this line and paste it within our list employees component in this filter employees method. So we have to use this keyword here to refer to the employees property within our component. And instead of search term, we want to use this parameter search string. Let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice our list page is empty. That's because on the initial page load, this filtered employees property to which we are binding is empty. So in ng on the net, we want to initialize the filtered employees property with the full list of employees that we have in this employees property. Notice now we see our full list of employees and our filtering also works as expected. Now, when we click this button, change employee name, we are changing one of the employee names. And the method that is called when we click that button is this method, change employee name. Notice we are changing the name of the first employee to Jordan. So if we take a look at the first employee, it's Mark, and we are changing his name to Jordan when we click this button. So the question here is when we click this button and when we have this filter, will our filtering work? Let's look at that in action. I click the button, but I don't see Jordan name in this filtered list. So our filtering is broken, but it's not difficult to fix it. So when I remove this letter J, I see Jordan. So the name has been changed, but our filtering didn't work. But it's not difficult to fix because we have moved the filtering logic into a component class. And all we have to do is within this method change employee name, we have to execute our filtering logic. So after we change the employee name, we want to update the filtered list of employees. So this dot filtered employees equals this dot filter employees method. And then to this, we need to pass the search term, which we have in the search term property. We have our full list of employees again. Let's type letter J and let's click this button. And now notice in the filtered list, we also see Jordan as expected. So the important point to keep in mind is the filtering logic which we have in this filter employees method is only executed in two scenarios. When the value in the search by name text box changes and when we click this change employee name button. So this is the reason it is recommended to move the filtering logic into the component where we need it so we have better control on when and how that filtering code is executed. On the other hand, if we move this filtering logic into a pipe, we don't have much control on when that pipe should and shouldn't execute. Here is the filtering code which we just implemented. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.